So I'm sitting down with Ruben Oslund, um, the, the creator of a fabulous Cannes title that everybody absolutely adored. It was the buzz film of the Ernst Sultan Regard mm -hmm. category. Yes. Let's begin with the title change or yeah. the multiple title usage for different territories. Yeah. Um, it arrived in Cannes with Force Majeure. Yeah. It also had, I knew the, the project as Tourist. Mm. Um, both have different sense or a different uh, sensibility depending on how you observe the film. I was wondering if you could, first of all, talk about perhaps why Force Majeure became the official title for how North American audiences will come yeah. to, to know it. And, yeah. and right now we're sitting in the films we like offices in Canada. Yeah. Um, so they'll be using this title and then Tourists in your native yeah. Sweden and Scandi territories. Yeah. Maybe talk about yeah, sure. that. How well, I mean, uh, Tourist, or that, that means tourist, yes. um, was the title of the project when we started. And uh, the project got quite established because I, I like to talk about my films. Mm -hmm. So I talked to all, all the journalists that I, I have met. I have told about the avalanche and the avalanche situation and the father running away. So uh, quite many have written about the project and already named it Tourist in the Swedish Swedish media. Okay. Uh, and um, when the title Force Majeure came up, for me it was like this is the title, this is the title of the film actually, because uh, uh, there's like a contract between men and women, uh -huh. and, and the, uh, Force Majeure is something when it's, it's uh, uh, a situation that you don't know how to handle. It's an exception from the rules. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's turning upside down on everything we know. And um, uh, we are uh, totally, uh, how do you say, we don't know how to handle it at all. Mm -hmm. and, and it's used in insurance, insurances as a, as a legal term. So when you travel you, uh, in Sweden, that's the first time you get in contact with the term for, force majeure. Uh, and force majeure is very often co uh, connected to, to uh, nature catastrophes, yes. like earthquakes exactly. and stuff like that. The insurance doesn't cover... Uh, when it's force majeure, and that, that's exactly what's happening in the film. The, they they agreement on um, a, a marriage and be playing the roles of a man and a woman in a, in a couple. Power, power well, dynamics. In yeah, a way. yeah, yeah, and and uh, uh, well, the avalanche starts a force majeure. Of course. Suddenly, the agreement doesn't uh, doesn't count anymore. <laughs> well, that's so, it. So, so I really like uh, like the title. And of course, force majeure, mm -hmm. yeah, a big big power. And uh, if you if you uh, translate uh, the, le the the legal term uh, or the insurance term to English, it's uh, translated to act of God. So there's something epic about it. Oh, it's something okay. uh, I mean so big. But then when we were supposed to have the Swedish uh, premiere after Cannes, uh, uh, that, yeah, Tudis was so established, so we used to... So you're, uh, we, you're disassociating yourself from that title, which was pr the production title. Yeah. But yeah. I, I love what you're, you're, what you're telling me about Force yeah. Majeure. It has double, maybe triple meanings yeah. as to what that it can symbolize for the yeah. film. That's a great title. Yeah. Kudos yeah. on the title. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember the first, uh, the first sequence. It's a, tr it's a moving tracking shot um, uh, with a T-bar. Yeah. I was thinking a lot of nature. I was thinking of nature a lot throughout this film, and not only nature, but actual the animal instinct. Mm. And when I saw that first tracking shot, I was thinking of ducks. Mm. <laughs> and I'll tell you why I was thinking of ducks. And if I remember correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong. Ducks, usually the leader, the the, the parent, uh -huh. is the first person yeah. in in the in the trail. Yeah, well, that's a. Uh and yeah. your tracking shot, yeah. and I don't, I'm not going to give anything away during this, this interview, but it's an interesting choice in how you decide to divulge your lineup, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the key players. Yeah, Could you talk course. about, the, I mean, I think that's a purposeful choice on your part. Yeah, of course. Are you foreshadowing who has more importance? or? Well, uh, for me, uh, definitely, I think you're completely right, but I, uh, 
I, I did it more on just this is the way it should be. The father goes first in the ski lift, and then the kids is coming, and then the the mother is uh, the, the the last one. If everyone if anyone falls, she she will be there, and another adult. But I mean, Thomas is playing the leader role of the family, and when they are skiing, maybe he's taking even more a bit of responsibility than he does in in other other family life mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. so now this is his playground. Now he will f he will show you the way they should go and um, yeah so yeah I think that's a there's a little bit of good, insight to, to, to that yeah. to that sequence there. Uh, how do you write comedy and drama on the page and then how does it how do you how do you approach it when you are workshopping or you're actually filming with the, with your set of players? Yeah. How does that work? Mm, I guess. Uh, I really, really love scenes where you can be horrified in, in one moment and a couple of seconds later it, it's very humoristic. And I really like when you have scenes that it's not very easy for the audience to decide if I should be horrified or if I should laugh. Uh, so I always try to find this complexity in, in the scenes and I mean, if, if you look at life in itself I mean, even the most dramatic events that take place have very trivial uh, comical details in mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. uh, for example I was doing a, a short film that is called Incident by a Bank that mm -hmm. is a reconstruction of a failed robbery attempt uh, and when you have seen robbery on, on cinema it's always very dramatic and it's very well choreographed they know exactly what they are doing but when I saw it in real life, I, I don't think I have seen anything as absurd and clumsy and people on the street were like acting in, in, a, in a total sur surreal, sur surreal mm -hmm. way. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, I, it's definitely good for me to highlight uh, uh, the humor. And I also think it's, it's easier to... Uh, uh, find or point out the humoristic details in a very dramatic moment if we are taking a step back mm -hmm. and not looking too emotionally on, on what's happening more of a voyeuristic way of uh, looking at them almost like an anthropologue that is looking at human and trying to learn something how they behave and um, so also the, also the perspective that that, that I want uh, the perspective not to be too close emotionally. Mm -hmm. and me, I mean, my, my emotions are when I look at the characters and what they end up in the film, more of I'm um, registrating and okay, so they're doing ah, like, like almost like we are doing a nature film, we are filming buffaloes and lions or yeah, stuff you're, like that. You're, you're Richard <laughs> at, at Attenborough yeah, in a way. Exactly. <laughs> um, actually, I'm gonna fast forward to a question actually because you're talking about that. Um, your, your background, as we both know, um, or as the, the hardcore fans know, mm -hmm. is that you come from a, a ski docu, mm -hmm. docu thing, mm -hmm. and I was, I was, I was a, very curious as to the setup in, um, um, interior sequences yeah. specifically the hotel Hitchcockian a little bit yeah. people are voyeuristic a little bit yeah. I was wondering if that's something that I mean you were a ski bum I'm going to call you yeah, what you were I back sure. in the day mm -hmm. was that something that you kind of like oh look at these upper crust families yeah. it's so interesting these dynamics where yeah. they, they uh, ski hills are play are playful environments mm -hmm. for the upper crust for people mm -hmm. who are rich yeah, yeah. and I was thinking oh perhaps Ruben's really curious about the mundane and that so uh, mm. I don't even know where I'm going with this but that, that's an observation I made um, yeah, I, I, I think you're totally right or I, I have been very interested in that I, I mean the, the, the setup of the avalanche is uh, also so interesting because you have people going to re ski resorts they, are, they uh, have their life they are in control of life they are wealthy and I really wanted to mess up things for them <laughs> I wanted them to face uh, human mechanism that they have uh, thought that they didn't have. They have they have seen it in like uh, war zones or yeah. uh, in other parts of the world where where people are poor or they are 
stronger conflict going on. Yeah. And suddenly they have to realize, okay, uh, I, I'm also an animal. And <laughs> I also have to, uh, 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 when, I, when, when I'm uh, a victim of my instincts, I will, I will run and abandon my family, even though I have greater thoughts about myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so I also wanted to look at the family. I mean, they, are, they have all the things that we should want in our society. Yes. They, they have, he has a beautiful wife. Uh, they have two wonderful kids. They are going to this five-star luxury hotel. But still, I wanted to look at them. Oh my God, what a mess. Yeah. What about if this was your lifestyle? Yeah. Going to a, standing in a hallway and uh, arguing, not arguing in front of your kids. And also the, the perspective of the, gen, the gender, uh, the, the, the cleaner in yeah. the hotel. Yeah. Of course, he also have a social economic different situation. Of course. Than, and they have so he's like he's fascinated <laughs> he's fascinated he's also he's on a different angle as well you yeah. play with angles you know yeah. he's looking down on yeah. them and also they're looking up at yeah. him you know there's a power dynamic there as well yeah. there's so much to say about this film um, and yeah I, 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 that's what I was thinking I, I wrote down cultural curiosity on your part and also mm. class experimentation you like experimenting mm. with the classes mm. which we find in play I mean play I absolutely love play mm. I was so disappointed that uh, North American distributors did not pick up mm -hmm. on this. Um, we'll, we'll touch up, we'll touch back on on, on what's going to happen in the future with that. Um, um, I want to talk about a very ballsy choice um, in the film. Is that there's a kind of disease? I'll call it a disease, and it spreads from one character set, <laughs> which is this really established family. Like you say, you know, they're brushing their teeth. We love them, yeah. and the audience responds perfectly well to them mm. and we can almost put ourselves in their, their shoes and then you bring us to this other character set yeah. and we just don't bring us this character set you come you almost abandon yeah kind of like what the father does to his family in a way you abandon them and you say you know fuck you guys i want to go see what happens with this this pairing yeah and i thought that was a really ballsy move to to do midway into yeah. the film it's almost yeah. like you killed a character that yeah. the you know the lead actor when you're not yeah. supposed to no. <laughs> I, want, I, I was curious about that choice mm -hmm. how did how did that how did you make that decision it's 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 almost i would say it's risque in a way because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. play is like mm -hmm. play is one thing and then it's yeah. another thing yeah this one is like we pull out from one yeah. family and we're going to get yeah. back to them at some point but i actually i didn't think of it as a risky move because um, at least i did it but i can tell in the editing that we well that conversation the the, the yeah, insatisfactions the bed, yeah. are, are coming are but what, I, what, somewhere I, else. what i think the my attitude when i make the film is What's the main character is the thematic and the situation with the avalanche, and mm -hmm. all other things are just there to reflect different perspectives on it. Mm -hmm. So the the more perspe perspective I can find and reflect the the the, the main uh, question or the main thematics, the yeah. better. Yeah. So I wanted like Charlotte that is uh, living her life in a totally different kind of lifestyle. She's like. And not traveling around with her family, she, she can't think of anything worse. She says, uh -huh. and she have different men all every day on the ski uh -huh. ski uh, week. And then we have the other couple that uh, he's divorced, Max, and he have a younger girlfriend. And uh, I think we love everybody loves Matt's beard. I think yeah, it's like yeah. in the era of the hipsters, he's got the best hipstery beard. Yeah. But um, so so what I thought about. Um, um, with Max and Fanny was of course that the, the avalanche is like going it's um, the emotions are uh, it's like a disease yeah. and in the beginning Max is in control of the relationship of, with this young girl yes. and he's like I mean he's 15 years old uh, and, and he's like the one that is in control and he's the one that is rational and she should be naive in the beginning and then Things are flipping over because first, 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 Max can say you have to see this from a perspective that uh, he acted in a split of a second, and he can talk very rationally when it when it has to do with Thomas. When but when Fanny suddenly say well, uh, that she might think that Max also would have run, and he's so hurt, <laughs> it's becoming so childish, and he's. Uh, uh, and she's the one that is the rational one that says it was only a hypothetical yeah, question. Yeah, I love this. So part. I wanted to flip over the characters also, and 
I needed to stay with them quite a while to really mm-hmm. highlight how child he, child, childish he is. Yeah, is. the man child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You 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 succeeded on 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 both both uh, pro, uh, male protagonist yeah. levels, if you want to call it that. Play. Yes. Um, I like how you have um, your your camera aesthetic in transportation. Mm. In this film, there's a bus scene. It's a crucial bus scene. Yeah. I love this scene. Mm. It, there's a lot of um, how can I say this? There's a lot of thoughts in public transport. I'm thinking mm-hmm. of the play scene where everything happens in a in a in a um, what's the word I'm looking for? The Street frame, car. a still frame, yeah, oh, a still I, I frame. Okay. And I was wondering what attracts you to this uh, particular um, look at people in in moving vehicles. Yeah. Like like I, I saw that link. But what I really like is well, for example, in play when things are happening in public places and yes. you don't know who should take responsibility and uh, if you if you should do something or if you are you look like for a, a passive, uh, yeah. passive uh, viewer uh, that was something that I was really interested in but also I mean the couch uh, uh, ride or the bus ride mm-hmm. in, in First Majeure I mean all the passengers in the bus have ended up with a bus driver that might kill them. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, the inspiration for the scene actually comes from a YouTube clip that is called, if you Google, Idiot Spanish okay, Bus Driver Almost okay. Kills Students. And uh, so check it, check it out because it's so interesting when you, are, when you have this bus driver, and actually you, 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 it might be an intelligent idea of doing a revolt. Yeah, uh, and, but we have put our trust in our lives in this man's hand, and he seemed not to uh, be qualified for handling <laughs> the bus. And it's so it takes so long before you uh, know no, I have to do something, <laughs> and I really really like that. Mm. Yeah, gr- how we're conditioned in groups and individuals is really really interesting. You know, yeah. like when you hear about bra- uh, scenes of bravery and uh, somebody falls in the metro, mm. it's really interesting what happens. And, yeah. and and in planes, when we find out that pilots only uh, you know they only pilot a, fil- uh, a plane yeah. for three minutes out of a three hour flight, yeah, that's yeah, the scariest yeah, thing yeah, ever. Yeah, exactly, so exactly. so it's really interesting that you, that you propose. Uh, uh, those dynamics. Anyway, uh, last question. Actually, I just learned of this: is that uh, Ruben Oslund is going on a tour, a North American tour. Yeah. I don't know if you can spill the beans here, but we're gonna some no, some it's, some it's, cities. Yeah, I know yeah. you're going to New York Film Fest next. Yeah. Um, apparently, we might see some ski films. We might see Involuntary yeah. again. Uh, play like yeah. what's what? Sure. Perhaps describe uh, that. It's in January. Okay. Uh, and it's a retrospective. Uh, and, You're um, so young. Yeah, well, sure. It's not the time for retrospective, sure. but uh, well, I will have another one okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, in a couple of years. But um, we are going to New York, and we're going to LA, and we're going to Washington and Minneapolis. And uh, I, I'm going to screen one of my the ski films I did when I was around 20. Yeah, that was called Free Radicals. Okay, and so people that have been skiing and read like powder magazine which is the biggest I remember that yeah. it was like the yeah. slasher magazine yeah. but for powder people exactly yeah. so they were re- reviewing it and we had good reviews back in the 90s in powder magazine so we're going awesome. to ski one, uh, screen one of those films and then I have two short films one is called Incident by a Bank yeah is, uh, which you just mentioned re- uh, yeah reconstruction of a failed robbery and a one called autobiographical scene number 6882 <laughs> Uh, and that is about uh, uh, a young man that had brought up his friend on a friends on the bridge, uh-huh. uh, and he he have said that he's going to jump uh, from the bridge just to show how brave he is. But when they get, get up there, the bridge is quite much higher than he thought when he was looking at it from from, from that perspective. Yeah. yeah. So and he and it's a very very group dynamic uh, short film, and then. Also, Involuntary, uh, that so, had a premiere in 2008, yeah. and Play, that had a, its premiere in 2011, so and, you're gonna, and, and also Force Majeure. So you're going to package this and actually present these films uh, to, the, to these cities? Yeah. yeah. Cool, that's awesome. Um,